Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I am going to be presenting a full tutorial and sample two-player playthrough of Bonfire, a new game by popular designer Stefan Feld. Now, as with scores of other videos I've created over the past many years, I'm going to be doing this, presenting this tutorial and playthrough using a program that I wrote to play the game. The advantage of my using a program is that it's going to provide you with a front row seat and let you see everything that's going on in detail. But beyond that, the program's also going to ensure that I don't make any mistakes in the course of this presentation. If you've ever done this sort of thing, you know you can easily become forgetful in the course of simultaneously teaching and playing, presenting a game. And my program is going to ensure that I don't accidentally forget some rule or skip some important step. Suffice it to say, I write these programs for my own personal enjoyment. I don't make them available to the public due to copyright restrictions. Uh, but that is unless a publisher specific, uh, specifically asks me to make it available for free to the public, which has happened actually once or twice over the years. If you've played other Stefan Feld games like most of us have, you pretty much know that you don't play his games for the immersive themes, but rather for their interesting mechanisms. There's a theme attached to Bonfire, but personally, to me, it's so wacky and out there that I'm not even going to attempt to rely on it to teach the game today. If you want to look into the theme, they've actually written a backstory. You can kind of uh, read it and maybe you're going to be more attached to it than I am. But honestly, it's for me, it's such a weird theme that it almost turned me off to the game. But fortunately, the interesting and... Um, interwoven mechanisms eventually won me over. With that in mind, let's get underway. Now I'm going to be playing a two-player game today between the blue player and the red player, and I'm going to be demonstrating most of the rules over the course of the playthrough. But I want to start by giving you a brief overview of what it is that you're trying to accomplish in the game. That way you'll have some understanding of what's going on. It should come as no surprise, I'm not going to be playing to teach you how to play well. A lot of things I'm going to be doing in this playthrough will be for the sole purpose of ensuring that you understand how the game works, uh, and so that I can demonstrate all of its features. I also want to move the turns along at a pretty good clip, so bottom line is don't watch this video hoping to come away with any great strategy. On the contrary, my play as I go through this is, is just not going to be very good. Let me start by giving you a sense of the goals of the game. All of these goals focus on filling in and fleshing out your player board. One of the things you'll be working on is building paths on your player board. You start the game with your first path already pre-built. And this is the, path, the first path over here on the left edge. You can see that a path depicts both a color, blue, red, or yellow, as well as a resource, blossom, fruit, herb, shell, root, or in this case, gold. Your first pre-built path is always yellow and always depicts a goal. But over the course of the game, you'll be adding more paths, always from left to right. For purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to be building paths here at random, but you'll be trying to build paths of a certain color and or resource if possible. So, for instance, as you build paths, they're going to just appear like that, and they'll just sort of circle around your entire player board. These are called paths because they provide a walkway for your guardians, these little dudes or this little dude over here on the far left. During the game, you'll be making processions that allow your guardians to move along the paths. Again, for example, from here, the starting tile, I can move this uh, guardian up to there. 
and then up to there and you can see it just kind of skips along as it goes. You start the game with one guardian in your player color, in this case red, but over time you can acquire up to four additional different colored guardians. So for instance, you can have a light blue guardian, a light red guardian, a light yellow guardian, and a gray guardian. When you make a procession, all of your guardians get to move, but generally speaking, you're limited to one guardian per path tile, except, of course, for the starting space. So you'll want to ensure your guardians have room to advance in lockstep. So if I was making a procession of one, then the guardian furthest along would advance one path first, then the guardian behind her would advance one path, and so forth. When a guardian ends its movement on a path tile, you gain the resource depicted on that path tile. You can also have to focus on adding portals to your player board. You can think of portals as unique keys that unlock and allow entry from the path to the inner sanctum of your player board. By and large, portals are added to your player board from right to left, the opposite of your paths. Each player's player board is slightly different and depicts a different key in each of the seven positions. In this case, the key or portal that I want to get on the far right of my player board has this triangle icon on it. So once I get the portal, it's going to look like that. As I get more portals, they'll appear from right to left. So I'll just keep clicking here so you can see how the portals are being added all the way from right to left until you finally get to the uh, back to the first space. If we take a look at Blue, over here he's got different keys or different portals that he needs to get from right to left. So this ensures that every player is looking for different portals at the start of the game. Over time, you'll also be acquiring tasks and positioning them in these circles on your player board. While paths are added from left to right and portals are added from right to left, you can actually add tasks in any order you like. Tasks like paths also come in three colors blue which are the easiest tasks to complete red somewhat more difficult to complete and finally yellow the hardest to complete also each task depicts a point value on it so for example you might see a two-point blue task or a three-point blue task you might see a red task that varies from four to five, or you might see a yellow task that varies from six all the way up to eight, which is the hardest task. Like any game, over time you have to get to understand what the iconology represents. So for instance, if I go and say add this blue task here, this task indicates that I have to have two each of two different resources, not gold. This red task means that I have to have a gray and a blue guardian. This says I have to have three red pads. Once you've fulfilled a task, you can ignite it and turn it into a bonfire. When you ignite a bonfire, you get to move the novice, this little do here, you get to move it to the high council on the main game board where you gain bonuses, such as gain a path for free, or move a guardian anywhere on your player board, or gain a new guardian of a color you don't already have. Igniting a bonfire looks like this. So if I flip over some of these others, you can clearly see what its color is and what its point value is.
when you have a path on your player board with a corresponding portal and a corresponding bonfire, you'll be able to move a guardian and have her stand next to that bonfire. Like I said, don't ask me about the theme here. So for instance, if I take this blue guardian and advance it, it could go there. But now, instead of going this way, I can have it go this way and enter this bonfire. Now, once a guardian enters a bonfire, it's there for the rest of the game. So this blue guardian won't be advancing any further. But I could, for example, advance this red guardian. And I could advance this yellow guardian. Now, I can't advance this yellow guardian any further because this space is already occupied. I can't advance this one any further because this one has, uh, this path is already occupied. So again, if I were doing a procession, this one would move first, then this one would move next. They each move up to the maximum number of steps you can take for that procession. The yellow one would go that way, and the gray one would go that way. Again, once you have a fulfilled bonfire, then you can instead move the guardian when you're doing a procession directly into that bonfire, like so. There are five common tasks that players are competing for during the game. The first of those is seven tasks and our bonfires, filling in all seven of these circles. Another common task is accumulating seven portals. In this case, I have all seven portals. Here, accumulating all seven paths. And this common task is owning all five guardians. There are also gnome cards. One of the common tasks is, in to, is to have six gnome cards in your hand. These gnome cards come in two varieties. There are elder gnome cards, which are one of the only ways to score points during the game. You're usually going to want to acquire these later in the game when they're worth a lot of points to you. Uh, elders are similar to the common tasks. So, for example, this first one says score one point for every path tile you have. So the maximum you can score with this elder is seven. Uh, this one says score one point for every portal you have. Uh, score one point for every task or bonfire that you have. Score a point for every guardian that you have. Uh, or score a point for every gnome card that you have. There are also specialist gnome cards down here. These provide you with special abilities, special rule-breaking abilities during the game. Anyway, that's enough to get you started. The rest of the rules are best explained during gameplay, so let's restart the game and go on from there. So it looks as though blue was randomly chosen to go first. You'll notice that each player starts the game with one of every resource. Blossom, fruit, herbs, shell, roots, and gold. Gold is a wild resource and can be substituted for any other resource when you're paying for something. In addition, Two of any non-gold resource can be substituted for any other resource if you're really in a pinch and need a particular resource that you don't have, again, in order to pay for something. Now, that's important to emphasize. You can use gold to pay for something like a card or to pay to acquire a task, for example, but you can't use gold to meet the requirements of a task. For instance, uh, this task here indicates that you have to own three shells. You can't fulfill this task by owning two shells and one gold. Each player has an identical set of eight fate tiles that are shuffled, with seven of them displayed over here in a column next to their player board. The eighth fate tile is positioned in the center of their fate area on their player board. Before a player takes his first turn, a player can either choose to start the game with the random fate tile that happens to be in their fate area, or they can swap it 
with the fate tile in the center of their supply column, this one. So for example, this has a blue, green, and purple, but this one over here has a blue, brown, and light blue action symbol on it. So if I wanted to, I could swap these back and forth once I decided which one I wanted to start with. You can see I'm simply swapping this tile with the one that's in the middle of my supply column over here. For blue, I think I'm just going to stick with this tile. The one that has a blue, looks like a ship icon on it. This one is green and has a path symbol on it. And this one, which is purple. The fate tile you choose to put in the center of your fate area on your player board determines which three action tiles you're going to start the game with. In this case, I'm going to be starting with a blue sail action tile, a green path action tile, and a purple great bonfire action tile. In addition, I'm going to start the game with two wild yellow action tiles. Like resources, a yellow wild action tile can be substituted for any other action tile and two non-yellow action tiles can be substituted for any other action tile as well. So for example, if I wanted a second Great Bonfire action tile, one of these purple tiles, I could use this one because it's wild, or this one because it's wild, or I could use both of these to substitute as another purple action tile. The action tiles correspond to the different actions you can perform during the game. The green path action tile lets you acquire a path from the display on the game board over here, or to draw blindly from the face down pile. The blue sail action tile lets you sail your ship over here to an island, where you can acquire tasks or guardians in the corners. The purple bonfire action tile lets you go to the great bonfire on the game board over here where you can acquire a portal, an action tile, and or a resource. You can see that the portals are all randomly strewn out here along the outside of the great bonfire. There's a brown gnome action tile which looks like this over here what you acquire in an elder or a specialist. The red task action tile lets you acquire a task from an island where your ship happens to be docked. The light blue guardian action tile, which looks like this, lets you acquire a guardian from one of the corner islands on the game board. You can also use the light blue guardian action tiles to start a procession and advance your guardians along the paths of your player board. For your turn's action, you can also choose to flip a task on your player board in order to ignite a bonfire, as I showed you earlier. Uh, obviously, you can only do that if you have a task somewhere on your player board that you can fulfill and th therefore can flip and ignite into a bonfire. Also for your action, you can choose to take a fate tile from your supply column, from either end of your supply column, from the top or the bottom, I should point out, and place that fate tile onto your player board. Now, you can only do that when you have zero or one action tiles remaining in your supply. Now, granted, that's a lot of actions you can choose from during your turn, which explains why the player aid uh, over here next to your player board looks so confusing and convoluted. But the truth is, you'll only want to focus on performing a particular task at a particular time, so the game isn't quite as overwhelming as it appears to be at first blush. Though Bonfire is a classic Feld game because of its interwoven mechanisms, like many of his other titles, such as Trajan, which happens to be one of my personal Feld favorites. There are a lot of different paths you can take on your way to victory in this game, or defeat. For Blue's first turn, let's choose to visit the Great Bonfire. 
Now, in order to do that, I have to spend one purple action tile, and that would allow me to rotate the bonfire pointer clockwise one step. If I spend two purple action tiles, for example, this one and, for example, that one, because it's wild, I could rotate the great bonfire by two steps clockwise. If I spent three purple action tiles, I could move the pointer on the great bonfire to any section of the great bonfire. But if you're the first player to take the great bonfire action, then you could spend one action tile only to move the pointer to any section of the great bonfire. Since the Great Bonfire is the sole source of portals in the game, let's do that. So because Blue is the first player to use the Great Bonfire, I only need to spend that one action tile. If you look at Blue's player board, I need to get a portal on the far right over here that, well, it looks like two moons. So let's find a location on the Great Bonfire where, where I can pick up that particular portal. It looks as though that would be over here on the east or down here in the southeast there's one uh, or there's another one right here in the south. Each location of the Great Bonfire displays three or four portals depending upon the player count, in this case three because we're playing a two-player game. And it also displays a, a action, an action tile and a resource. So this section, I could get a moon portal, or this well, it looks like a semicircle portal, or this one that looks like a cup. Or I could get this guardian action tile, or I could get this blossom resource. When you use the Great Bonfire, you choose to gain two of those three possible rewards. So I'm going to move the pointer all the way down here to the south. And for the first of my two rewards, I'm going to gain the first portal I need. So it takes that portal and puts it in that key on my player board. Right here, matching the portal that I need. For my second reward, I can either gain a Great Bonfire Action Tile, another one, just like the one I'm about to spend, or I could choose to score two victory points. What the heck, let's go for the, the two points. There aren't many ways to score points during the game. That, and acquiring one of these elders, is the only way to score points during the game. All of your other points are going to come at the end of the game. Just like that, my turn is over. Now there are bonus actions I could take during my turn when I'm able to fulfill a common task, but it's going to be quite a while before I'm able to do that. So we're going to end our turn and turn it over to the red player. Because this is red's first turn, she too has to choose which fate tile she wants to start the game with. Either this one with a red task a brown gnome and a purple bonfire action on it, or this one in the middle of her supply column that has a blue sail, a green path, and a purple bonfire icon on it. We'll just go with this one without swapping. And just like the blue player, we're also going to start with two yellow wild action tiles. To reinforce the great bonfire action, let's have red do the same thing that blue did. So I'm going to choose my one purple Great Bonfire Action Tile. Now the portal I need has a triangle on it. And it just so happens that there is a triangle one step away from where the pointer is actually pointing on the Great Bonfire. So I only need to spend one Action Tile in order to move this one step clockwise. Like so. I will choose light blue to gain the portal I need. The triangle goes right there. And I'll also choose to take a blue sail icon. Back to blue. For blue's next turn, I'll have him acquire a path tile. 
It costs one green action tile to acquire your second, third, or fourth path tile. And it costs two green action tiles to acquire your fifth, sixth, or seventh path tile. Remember, path tiles are added from left to right, so for now I only need to spend one green path action tile. To do so, I can choose any one of these paths on display over here on the game board, or I can draw blindly from the top of the deck, as I said earlier. Furthermore, if the display happens to contain path tiles of all the same color, you may discard all of them to the bottom of the deck and draw four new path tiles to refresh the display. Remember, it pays a few extra points to have the path tile match the color of the bonfire. And since blue are the easier tasks to complete, let's start with this blue path here. That one has a blossom on it. So now Blue has two path tiles on his player board. It didn't cost me any resources to acquire that path tile. I only had to spend the one green action tile that I had. I think I'm going to have Red stick with portals. She'll spend her single purple great bonfire action tile to rotate once because I can see here the next portal I need looks like this semicircle and there is one of those sitting right here on the great bonfire. So I'll gain my next portal and I can either gain a green path tile or choose to gain a gold resource. Gold's wild so I'm going to take the wild gold resource. Let's now have blue sail to acquire a task. When you're sailing for the first time in the game, your ship sort of is over here, not adjacent to any particular island, and you only have to pay one action tile to sail to any island on the game board. But after that, you're going to have to pay one sail action tile to move to an adjacent island by following these paths here or you can pay two action tiles to move to an island that's two adjacent lines away, or you could pay three action tiles to move to any island on the game board. Since this is my first sale action, I only have to pay one sale action tile. And that's going to allow me to sail to any island on the game board. Now ideally, I'm looking for either for a yellow task to match this yellow path, or a blue task to match this blue path. Remember, blue is easy, red is medium, and yellow is the hardest to accomplish. A yellow task is going to be a hard one to pull off early in the game. It might be difficult to predict uh, at this early stage what I might or might not be able to tackle. So I'm going to aim for an easier blue task that's probably going to make more sense for blue uh, at this stage of the game. Uh, okay, for example, there's this blue task up here, which scores two points, that requires that you have one path tile on your player board that depicts an herb. Mine currently has a gold and a blossom, but it's not going to be too hard to find a path, hopefully. For example, this one that has an herb on it. So I know that a path tile is currently available that has an herb, so maybe I'm going to aim to go to that island. So let's tell the program that we want to sail to this particular island where this blue task is located. So now I'm docked next to that island. And now, as an extra action, I can actually acquire a task. But as usual, I do have to pay the required action tiles. So in this case, I have my one wild action tile, it's automatically highlighted, and I'm going to click yes to say I want to acquire a task. To acquire my first task from an island, like this one, I only need to pay one action tile. But once I acquire this task from this island and mark it as such, 
I'm going to have to pay two action tiles if I wanted to acquire this task from the island as well. But if I go to another island, I'm only going to have to pay one action tile for the first one I acquire. But if I acquire a second one I'm going to, from that same island, I'll have to pay two action tiles. And if I want to acquire the third task from an island, if I was playing a three or four player game, I'd have to pay three action tiles. In this case, I only need to spend the one red task action tile. Or in my case, I'm spending a yellow wild action tile. The cost of acquiring a task is the resource shown on the island, in this case, the root, plus a resource depicted on an offering tile that I'm going to use to mark my purchase. Each player starts with 10 offering tiles, two for each of the five main resources. And these offering tiles are shuffled and divided into two face down stacks next to your supply column of fate tiles. So here I have a face down stack with the top one revealed of a blossom that has five tokens in it and another five token stack down here that happens to have the top one revealed with a shell on it. So in addition to paying the root shown here, I have to choose one of these offering tiles and spend that resource as well. At this point, I don't think it matters too much which one I choose at the moment. So I'm going to choose to use this offering tile with a blossom on it. And I'm going to have to pay a blossom and a root to acquire this task. I'm going to choose this task. And remember I can place it on any empty space on my player board. Clearly I want to place it in this second space to match the color of the path. So I'm going to pay one root and one blossom and now the task is here and my offering tile is placed here but as you can see, I now have only four tokens remaining in this particular stack of offering tiles. Let's go back to red. Red has a sail action tile as well. And maybe she wants to sail and perhaps be a little more brave and go for a slightly harder task to accomplish. Uh... How about this task over here that requires that you have three gnome cards? So let's sail there. I'm, again, it's the first set time that red is sailing, so I only have to spend one sail action tile. I'm going to tell red to go to this island over here. And yes, I want to use this wild action tile to perform a gain task action as my extra action. In addition to having to pay this blossom, I can choose either to pay an herb or a shell. For now, I'll just choose the shell. I want to choose this, this yellow six-point task. And I'll pair it with my first pre-built task over here that happens to be yellow. Blue's turn. Blue only has one action tile remaining. As long as you only have one or none remaining, you can choose to place a fate tile as your action. You do that by choosing either the tile at the top of your supply column or the tile at the bottom of your supply column. And then you have to place it so that it's adjacent to a previously placed fate tile in your fate area over here. As you might imagine, you can take these fate tiles and rotate them any which way in any one of the four compass directions. Your placement is going to determine what new action tiles you're going to gain as a result. So for example, let's say I choose this fate tile at the top. I can put that anywhere here as long as it's adjacent to my previously placed fate tile. Now if I placed it over here to the left, I would gain a brown gnome action tile, a light blue guardian action tile, and a green path tile. But if I were placing it here, I would also acquire a gold in addition to those three action tiles because I'm covering up this gold symbol on my player board. And if I placed it here, 
for example, I would gain the brown gnome action tile, the light blue guarding action tile, and the green path action tile, in addition to a yellow wild action tile. If I positioned my fate tile this way, I would actually gain two green path action tiles, the light blue guardian action tile, and the brown gnome action tile, because the tiles you gain include any and all orthogonally adjacent symbols to the tile you're placing. It's like a little mini game unto itself. And you can position tiles in such a way as to gain even more action tiles later in the game. For now, I think I am going to leave it like this and place it horizontally under the path action tile in order to gain two path tiles, a guardian tile, and a gnome tile. For now, I think I am going to leave it like this and place it horizontally in order to gain two path tiles, a guardian tile, and a gnome tile. Incidentally, it might look like I'm not rotating this when I do because everything is remaining upright, but I'm just doing that in my program. Obviously, if you rotate one of these tiles 180 degrees around, all the icons are going to be upside down. So I'm going to position it here and gain two path tiles, a guardian tile and a gnome tile, in addition to the wild action tile I already have. For now, let's turn over to red. Red has a task that requires three gnome cards, so let's get started trying to fulfill that. When you're buying a gnome card, be it an elder or a specialist, you either pay one gnome action tile and two of the resources depicted on the card, or you pay two action tiles and one of the resources depicted on the card. Let's check out the specialist cards and see which one might make the most sense right now. This first one lets me place a fate tile when I have three or fewer action tiles in my possession instead of just zero or one. This one lets me move an extra step when I'm performing a procession. This one lets me move uh, an extra island when I'm doing a sail action. This one lets me rotate the great bonfire one extra time when I'm performing a great bonfire action. Uh, the fifth one over here says every yellow wild action tile I have counts as two identical tiles instead of just one. That could actually be useful when buying gnome cards. That way I could pay fewer resources. This one over here says I gain two resources instead of just one when I'm moving a yellow guardian during a procession. For now, I'm going to spend my one brown gnome action tile perform a gnome action and I'm going to go for this fifth card here so I'm going to have to pay two roots or in my case one root and one gold. And now I have this particular gnome in my possession face up in front of me and we'll turn it over to blue. Blue is going to go for that path tile, so we're going to pay one green path action tile, perform a build path action. We're going to take this one that has the herb on it, and it's going to go right there. And now this task is fulfilled because I have one path tile depicting an herb, so it's ready to be ignited into a bonfire in a subsequent turn. I think Red is going to buy this gnome card that came up and replace the, the one in the fifth position I purchased earlier. Whenever I place a fate tile onto a symbol in my fate area, be it a gold or a yellow wild action tile symbol, I gain the depicted symbol twice instead of just once. Now I'm spending one yellow wild action tile, but now I have this specialist that says these count as two action tiles. So in order to purchase this gnome card, I only have to pay one blossom. In my case, I'm going to be paying one gold. And now I have two specialists. Blue's turn. Let's go ahead and ignite this bonfire now, now that I've completed the task. 
Once I do that, I'm going to take this blue novice that's sitting next to the bonfire and place it in one of the bonus spaces in the High Council. And over here in the, the High Council, I can choose to either gain two gold and one wild yellow action tile. I can choose to gain a path from the display or from the deck for free. Actually, in this case, I can actually turn the deck over, look through it, and find the exact path tile I want, then shuffling the deck. Over here, I can move a guardian forward or backward to any valid location in my player board. Over here, I can rotate the great bonfire to any location, gain the usual rewards. This one lets me gain a specialist for free. This one lets me gain another guardian. Over here, I can perform a free sale action. And over here, I can perform a free fate tile action. Note that in most of these cases, I could also choose to score one point if I want. I think I'm going to go for this one to gain a new guardian in a color that I don't already have. There does happen to be this specialist on deck over here that lets a yellow guardian gain a resource twice instead of once during a procession. And since Blue's ship is all the way over here and the yellow guardian island is all the way down here, maybe it makes sense to acquire a yellow guardian. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And now it's going to join my dark blue guardian over here in the first space of my first path tile. Now just because I got a yellow guardian doesn't mean that red can't get one as well. There's one of each of these extra color guardians for every player in the game. So every player could potentially have all five of their guardians. Incidentally, while I'm talking about the High Council, I should point out that the number of these little novices that are placed in the High Council, they trigger the end of the game. In a two-player game, when the seventh novice is placed in the High Council, the game is going to end approximately five rounds later. So Red is completely out of action tiles and has to place another fate tile in order to collect some more action tiles. Remember, she does benefit from uh, double symbols that she covers up. So let's take this fate tile from the top here. And uh, let's rotate it vertically and position it like this. So I'm going to gain two great bonfire action tiles, a guardian action tile, a task action tile, and two wild yellow action tiles. Back to blue. Uh, for blue, let's demonstrate a procession. I'm going to select this guardian action tile as well as this yellow action tile. That's going to allow me to move each of my guardians up to two spaces maximum. Now because blue and yellow are both in the same space, I can choose which one I might want to move first. I'll go ahead and move the yellow one first. I'll advance it one space and then another space and stop here collecting one blossom. For the blue guardian, I'll advance it one space. But remember, I'm limited to one guardian per path tile, so I'm not allowed to move it a second space. So I'll stop here and gain one gold. I think Red is going to continue to grab portals. So she's going to spend one great bonfire action tile to rotate the pointer once, going from here up to here, because I see the next portal that she needs up there. Gaining that portal. And because she can gain a fruit or a gnome action tile, I'll have her gain the fruit. Blue's been going big on path tiles, so let's go ahead and do that action again. 
We'll choose one green path to action tile. Choose to build a path. And uh, let's take this one from the top, the red one that has a fruit on it. So from now on, blue is going to have to pay two green action tiles in order to build more paths. I think red's going to go for her third gnome, selecting a yellow wild action tile. And she's going to choose this one that lets her get an extra rotation of the great bonfire anytime she performs a great bonfire action. And you know, I just realized something. <laughs> I really have been out of it. This task requires that I own three elders not three gnome cards. I wasn't paying close enough attention. So while I bought three of these specialists, which is not so terrible, in order to fulfill this task, I actually need three elders from up here at the top. That's why it's so hard to, to accomplish this task, to get six points. Because you normally don't get these until later in the game. Now remember, I'm limited to owning six cards, and I've already purchased three specialists. So in order to complete this task, I have to make sure I don't purchase any more specialists and instead just go for elders. It's a little early in the game to acquire these elders because I'm not going to score the maximum number of points that I might otherwise score. But this is only a demonstration, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's go back to blue. Blue's down to one action tile, and I think is going to go ahead and place another fate tile. He's going to take the top one here that has a sail, task, and path action on it. Uh, I think he's going to rotate it 180 degrees, like so, and position it down here in order to acquire three green path action tiles, one red task action tile, a sail action tile, as well as that extra gold that I'm covering up. Let's see, red needs this uh, portal that looks like a bicycle, and the next spot does have that portal in it. So I'm going to spend one Great Bonfire action tile to move one space. Remember, I now have the Specialist. Look, let's me move an extra space if I want to. But I'm only going to move one space. Take the portal. And I'll also take a root. I'm going to have Blue take the three herb task from the island where she's currently harbored. To do that, she's going to need to spend two task action tiles instead of one, instead of just one, because she's already taken one task from that island already. So she's going to spend this one, and in order to get that second, she's going to spend have to spend two of these because she doesn't have any wild action tiles. So she'll spend the sail and one of these path action tiles, that's going to provide her the two task action tiles that she needs in order to take this task. I think Blue's going to use his fruit offering tile here at the top. So the acquisition is going to cost him one root and one fruit, or in his case, a fruit and a gold. I could place it here, but I think I want to place it a little further along. So I'm going to place it over here. Red's going to start a procession with her one guardian action tile. She'll be allowed to move one step. She'll advance her one and only red guardian one step and gain a gold.
Blue's going to spend two of her green path action tiles, build a path, and grab this red one over here that has a blossom on it. That was part of the reason why I put this red task over here instead of over here, although either place would have been fine. Remember, these don't have to match in color, but you do gain extra points if they do match in color. Red is going to choose her yellow wild action tile, and remember that's worth two. Uh, she needs this portal next, and uh, it happens to be over there. So she is going to perform a great bonfire action. She could potentially rotate once or twice, but she also has this specialist that lets her rotate an extra time. So she could rotate one, two, or three times if she wanted to. She really only needs to rotate once to take the portal. She now has five of the seven she needs, and I'll have her take a wild action tile. Blue has a gnome action tile remaining. I think I will grab one of those for a change. I will select that action tile. Choose that action. And I think I'm going to have um, him go, I'm going to have Blue go for this specialist here that gives him one extra step anytime he performs a procession. It's going to cost, because I am, I'm only spending one action tile, it's going to cost two fruit. Blue doesn't have any fruits. It's going to be a little expensive. He's going to have to pay two gold. But maybe this will pay off. All right, so remember, red needs to acquire elders, not specialists. And it's like I said, it is a little early in the game because they're not worth as many points. But uh, she's going to go ahead and do that anyway. She's going to spend her wild action tile here. And she's going to acquire her sixth one that gives her a point for every gnome that she has in her possession. This is going to be her fourth gnome card. So this, taking this Elder is going to score her four points. I have to select the Gnome action. So it's now four to two. Blue has no action tiles. He has to place a Fate tile. He's going to take the one here on the top. and rotate it vertically and place it up here for two purple bonfire action tiles, a gnome action tile, a task action tile, and this wild yellow action tile that he's covering up. Red has one action tile remaining, so she also is going to place a fate tile. Uh, she'll take the one on the bottom. And rotate it and position it vertically. And put it up here like so to gain two gnome action tiles, a sail action tile, and two red task action tiles. Back to blue. Because blue has a yellow guardian, blue has his eye on grabbing this specialist over here. He's going to choose his gnome action tile and his wild action tile. He's going to grab the sixth specialist over here. It's going to cost a blossom, and he has the blossom. Red's going to spend two gnome action tiles to perform a gnome action and take the third elder here that scores one point for every 
portal, that will be worth five points for red. Again, it probably would have made sense to wait until red had more portals before grabbing that. I'm not playing to win, I'm just playing to demonstrate. Blue is now pretty short on resources. I'm going to have blue move one step on the bonfire and then just take the blossom and the guardian action tile. The portal that uh, blue needs is not uh, currently displayed in that section. So I think she's just going to sail down here and grab a gray guardian. Now to do that, she has to pay one guardian action tile. She doesn't have them, so she'll have to pay two of these action tiles in order to get the guardian. And now she has a gray guardian over here in her first starting space. I think blue is now going to perform another procession. I'm going to select one action tile, start a procession. Now remember I have the specialist that says I can move one extra space when performing the procession. And I also have the specialist that says that yellow, the yellow guardian gains an extra resource when she stops her movement at a path tile. Now I have a task here that requires that I own three herbs. I already own one herb, so I'm going to advance the yellow guardian one space. I could go another space, but I'm going to stop there, get collect two herbs, and now this task is potentially fulfilled. And I'll advance blue one step to collect a blossom. Okay, red has one tile remaining, so she's going to place a fate tile. I think she's going to take her bottom one here, rotate it vertically, and this positioning it here is going to collect her two guardians, three bonfires, and one path action tile. Blue is going to ignite this task because it is fulfilled. And now he's going to be able to place a novice for his second high council bonus. He can't go here because you can't place two novices of the same color in one area. He's going to go and gain a free path tile down here. Now he can take any one that's on display or any one from the deck. And I think he's going to take, actually he'll take this one, the yellow root. Red has five portals, needs this one next. Uh, wow, well, it's... And the, and the pointer is here. She's going to have to spend a lot to get to it. But she's going to go ahead and spend her three bonfire action tiles to move the pointer all the way over here in order to get her next portal. And she'll take a gnome action tile. Uh, blue only has one portal so far. His next one looks like that and happens to be in the next space. So he is going to perform a bonfire action. Gain his portal. And he will also gain a root. Back to red. 
Red's last portal is the one with the moons. That happens to be next in line. She doesn't have a bonfire action tile. She's going to go ahead and spend her green path action tile and her red task action tile to substitute for a purple bonfire tile. Move one step to gain her portal. And she'll take a wild action tile. And now for the first time, because Red has fulfilled a common task by having all seven of her portals, she can take the neutral novice over here that corresponds to that common task, which is uh, this one right here. And she is going to take a gain. She's going to gain a path just like Blue did. Take the bonus instead of scoring one point. She'll take this blue fruit after that the deck is reshuffled blue needs action tiles blue's going to take um, the one from the top and it's going to rotate it 180 degrees and put it like that to gain two t blue sails, a gnome, and a guardian. Red is going to perform a one step procession with her two guardians, gain a fruit, and a gold. Whose next portal is here. He doesn't have a bonfire action. He's going to spend a blue sail action tile and this red task action tile to perform a bonfire one step to gain his next portal. And he'll take a blue guardian action tile. Red wants to perform a path action. She's going to spend this red task and the brown gnome action tile in order to perform a build path action. She's going to take the one with the red shell at the top. I think blue's going to sail. Move one step over to this blue guardian island. Spend one of her guardian action tiles in order to gain her next guardian down here. So now blue has three guardians. Red's ready to place a fate tile. She's going to take her bottom one here and place it here. And that's going to collect her three gnome, gnome action tiles, a guardian action tile, and two pads. Blue's going to spend his one guardian action tile to start a procession and advance each one, I think, just one step. Collect a fruit. Collect an herb, collect a gold. Blue is certainly not hurting for resources. Red's going to build her third path, spending one green action tile. And She's going to grab this yellow blossom over here. 
And again, from now on, she too is going to have to pay two path action tiles in order to continue building paths. Blue is ready to place a fate tile. I'm going to grab the one here on the top. and rotate it vertically and put it up here for four path action tiles, one bonfire action tile, and two guardians. Well, red sees that blue has a lot of paths. He only needs one more and he'll have the whole set. I don't think red wants blue to be able to get that first elder because red is the one who wants to collect elders. So she is going to spend two of her gnome action tiles to grab this one. It's going to cost her a fruit. She does have the fruit. And that scores her four points because she has four paths. Now that Red has six gnome cards in her possession, she can fulfill this common task, own six gnomes. So she's going to take the neutral novice, and she is going to go over here to gain another guardian. And she'll take uh, her blue one. So now she has three guardians as well. Well, blue was sorry to see that gnome card stolen from him, as well as the common, as well as that neutral novice. But he is going to go ahead and build his final path. He's going to spend two green action tiles. And he's going to place this yellow root. He now has seven path tiles. He's going to take the neutral novice down here, uh, right here, that corresponds to that particular common task. And he's going to choose to perform a sail action, sailing to any island on the board. So the neutral novice is placed over there. And where does he want to sail? I think he's going to sail to this island over here. He has his eyes on this task that says own three each of two different resources, not gold. Remember, blue has lots of resources, so it's going to be pretty easy for him to fulfill that task. So that's the island he's sailing to. He doesn't have any red task actions, but he doesn't need to perform another green action, so he's going to spend his two green action tiles as if it were red. He'll choose this offering tile up here that has a root on it, and it's going to cost him a root and a fruit. Selecting this task. And he'll place it uh, over here in this space. Matching the color of the task with the color of the path. Okay, Red finally has the three elders she needs to fulfill this task. She's going to flip it, ignite it into a bonfire and take the novice that was standing there and place it over here to gain a path tile. And she'll take, uh, she'll take a blue root from the deck. Uh, blue still hurting for portals. Let's say he needs a bicycle portal. That is in the next area of the bonfire. He's going to spend one bonfire action to gain that portal. And 
and he st he still needs more portals. He's gonna t instead of the two points, he's gonna take the bonfire action tile to replace the one he just spent. Red with her three guardians is gonna perform a one step procession. She needs uh, she needs uh, it wouldn't hurt her to get some more uh, resources. She's going to advance red one space for a shell. Gray can now enter this bonfire because the path is there, the portal's there, and the bonfire is there. So the guardian's going to enter and stand next to that uh, bonfire. And now finally, blue is going to advance this blue guardian one space to collect a gold. I think blue is also going to perform a procession, a one step. Blue can move each one of his guardians two steps because of his specialist. He's going to advance yellow over here. And now he can enter this bonfire because the portal is there and the path is there and the bonfire is there. So the guardian moves into place. The dark blue, he'll advance here and there for a blossom. And he'll advance the light blue one space for another blossom. Now he has four blossoms and four herbs. Easily ready to fulfill this task over here. She spends a path action tile and both of these, so she has the equivalent of two green action tiles, builds a path, and she's going to take the uh, this one, the yellow fruit, and position it there. Blue's next portal happens to be this one, which is next. So he's going to spend one bonfire action tile to collect the portal. And he's not hurting for herbs. He's going to take the sale action tile. Red is ready to place a fate tile. She's going to take the one on the top here and rotate it vertically and just line it up like that I think for two tasks a sail and a path action tile clearly she wants to uh, start grabbing some more tasks so she only has one Blue is going to sail to this pink island to grab a pink guardian or a light red guardian. Has to spend uh, both of these action tiles to get it. And now has a red guardian down here. That makes four guardians so far for blue. One, two, three, four. So far, Red has three of her guardians. Red is going to sail. Sail up to this island and is going to spend the one red task action using her shell offering tile she wants to grab this task requiring a gray and red guardian placing it in the third space here blue is out of action tiles is going to take he only has two fate tiles remaining 
he's going to take his bottom one and uh, rotate it around place it like that for two tasks a sail a gnome and a wild because he's covering up a wild action symbol Red can't do much with what she has here. She is going to discard the task tile. Just going to get rid of it. So she only has one action tile now. And she's going to take her bottom fate tile and put it over here vertically for two sails, a bonfire, and a gold. Actually, two golds. Blue, I think, is going to sail to the east. Has his eye on this task here because he's down. He's almost depleted this one stack of offering tiles. So he's going to go to this island, spend one task action tile that's highlighted over here. Going to spend his root offering because he wants to deplete that stack of offering tiles. To grab this task and it's yellow so he'll put it in his first space okay now that red has acquired that task that requires two guardians she's going to continue sailing north to grab a pink guardian and she'll spend a sail and a bonfire action tile to get it So now she has her fourth guardian. Blue is going to use his wild action tile to sail. Sail down to this island. Going to spend one task action. He's going to spend this green herb offering tile to take that task tile and put it in the third space, matching the blue path. Here he's already fulfilled this task because he does have a path that has a fruit depicted on it. Back to red. Red's going to spend her two path action tiles for the one with a red root and get her last path. She's fulfilled the conditions for the common task, but that, that neutral novice has already been spent, so she can't place it. Blue has now fulfilled the task here, so he's going to ignite it. And uh, he, needs, he needs this symbol, this portal. He's going to choose to place his novice over here to rotate the great bonfire to a space of your choice. He's going to rotate it all the way. Where is that? What does he need? He needs the needs this one. He's going to rotate it to there. Gain the portal. And he'll take a task action tile. And that is the seventh novice now that has been placed in the high council. So there is a countdown that count down the last five rounds of the game. Red is going to be able to take five more actions and blue will be able to take four more actions before the game ends. A player always has the option of passing and dropping out of the game in order to score the number of points shown on the current countdown if they want to. But usually it's in your best interest to try to, uh, to perform actions. Red's out of action tile. She's going to place her last fate tile. 
down here for one sale action, four gnomes, and two guardians. So she has plenty of action tiles to work with now. Back to blue. Blue is going to highlight both of these to start a procession of one step. He gets to actually move two steps because of his specialist. The blue guardian is going to advance one step and then enter the bonfire here. Blue could enter this bonfire, but actually I want to advance blue up here to eventually enter this bonfire. So I'm going to stop there and take an herb and I'll advance red to there and stop to take a gold. Red would like to squeeze in one more task as possible. She does have a shell path. This one has have one offering tile on a shell island. Uh, she can't fulfill that. She's going to sail one step to the west. She's going to highlight two of her gnome action tiles to pay for the task. She'll choose this offering for a blossom, take that task, and place it in the second space of her player board, paying a fruit and a blossom, or in her case, a fruit and a gold. Ending her turn, the countdown clock is going to drop to three, so the game is now going to end in three rounds. We're quickly running out of time. Blue is going to ignite this task that's ready because he has depleted one of his offering tile stacks, the top one. Ignite that bonfire, take the, take the novice, and because he's out of action tiles, he's going to position it up here to immediately place a fate tile. Come over here to grab his remaining fate tile and he'll rotate it and position it right there to gain three bonfires, one guardian, and one task action tile plus gold. Okay, Red has three turns remaining. She is going to ignite this task because she now has a gray and red guardian. Gray is right there, red is over here. And she wants her very last guardian, so she is going to choose to acquire a guardian over here. Yes, and now she has her last yellow guardian. The common task of having five guardians, so she's going to take the neutral novice over here and choose to rotate the bonfire over here. And she'll rotate it all the way down here for two points and a great bonfire action tile. So it's looking, it's looking like red's doing pretty well here, but blue does have more tasks and better tasks. So Blue may still squeak out a victory. Uh, blue with two actions remaining. He's going to spend one bonfire to take his portal, his last portal, and an herb. Red's ready. Red is going to ignite this task. She'll choose to rotate the bonfire. 
and rotate it all the way around to get another two points as well as a purple bonfire action tile. It's now 15 to 2. Last round of the game. Blue is going to invite Blue is going to ignite his last task here. Go up and he's going to go down here to move one of your guardians backwards or forwards any number of steps. And it's probably in his best interest to move the Red Guardian into that bonfire. Fortunately, Blue ran out of time and couldn't quite get this Guardian to enter that bonfire. And last turn of the game, Red's going to spend two of her Guardians to perform a procession. Her red guardian enter the bonfire here and have blue advance one space and enter the bonfire here and is going to select yellow to advance one space for one gold. And red can't advance because uh, that path, path area is blocked. So that will end the game right there, and we'll see how final scoring works. So Blue did come out, come up with the victory with a score of 77 to 71. So first you score two to eight points for each one of your bonfires. Blue has six, eight, 10, 15, 22. 22 points for bonfires while red has 6, 8, 12 points for bonfires. You then score 2 to 8 points for every bonfire that has a guardian standing next to it. So for blue, that would be 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 6 is 18. And if we look at red, bonfires with guardians standing next to them, that's 4, 6, 12 for red. Two points for each portal next to a bonfire. One, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 for blue. And 2, 4, 6 points for red. Two points for every color matching pair of path tiles and bonfires. There's two, four, six, eight, ten for blue. And for red, two, four, six for red. Four points for each fulfilled common task. But if you happen to have all seven bonfires, it's worth seven points. Blue had uh, two common tasks fulfilled for eight points. Red had four common tasks fulfilled for 16 points. Three points for each unplaced fate tile. Nobody had, every, both players had spent all their fate tiles, and so neither player had one left over. And one point for every two leftover action tiles and resources. So blue has four action tiles, 7, 8, 12, 13, 15, divided by 2 is 7. 7 points for blue. In red case, it was 4 points for leftover action tiles and resources, divided by 2. Final score, 77 to 71. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and playthrough. Let me know if you have any questions. Post them in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.